What do you want to be when you grow up? Let me think about that. restaurant. Um, I have been in the food industry for more than 10 years. I started in California and then just went back here a couple of years ago. So I basically grew up in the food industry. My mom actually had a catering company when I was younger and um, a restaurant in what was in was in my house. So I, I grew up in the environment when I was a little I remember getting up in the at night and like rolling dough and then I'd make something and they put it in the oven and make it. So I went to college in San Diego, I went to UCSD um, and I studied psychology and media computing which is basically computer science and graphic design combined. Um, after that I went to culinary school to pursue my culinary degree. So in culinary school, I went to La Cuarango in Hollywood, California, and after I was done with that, I did an internship. I did an internship at Vessel in Hollywood, and after that, I actually got employed there and started making. I was an assistant PhD, because I was always involved in PhD before I even moved to California. When I was in secondary school, I actually had a small baking business. And I baked cakes and cheesecakes and all this stupid stuff. So I was also always like PhD inclined. Um, I didn't want to get stuck in PhD, so because I really enjoyed food as well. So I actually did my degree in culinary, not PhD. But I just happened to get an internship doing PhD. So I lived there for a while doing that. I was under um, the pastry chef there for like about a year. And as I was working there as well, I also started working at this restaurant called Moomed in Beverly Hills. And I did savory stuff there. Something you need to keep in mind if this is the career you are willing to pursue, that it is, it's fun and it's, yeah, it's a cool job and it's pretty trendy right now but being a chef it takes a lot of time a lot of dedication you have to sacrifice a lot you have to work on holidays you don't get to see your friends as much you don't get paid for most for like the majority of your, the beginning of your career so another kind of fun thing about being in the culinary industry is that the industry itself is based on a camaraderie so like chefs are supportive of one another yeah it is a very competitive environment but it's like a little family in itself because you go to different restaurants and you support them and their food and they come to visit you as well interested in pursuing a career in the culinary field um, in terms of subjects and studies in school I do recommend like maths it's, um, it sounds kind of not related but it actually is because there is a lot of calculations and when you're doing recipes and formulating recipes you need to be able to translate that and scale them accordingly so maths is actually very important so it is chemistry because we, especially here at Freewood, we do a lot of molecular gastronomy. We use a lot of chemicals and it's really important to know how they react with each other. Baking is a science in its own, so you want to know the reactions of chemicals and what to use and what you can use to substitute if you need to. So I think chemistry is also very important. Um, I think, well, English is important. You want to watch your grandma and you are also going to be talking to people a lot so you need to keep that in mind. Um, languages are also very important especially here because even in California actually because a lot of the people that do work at restaurants are minorities so you do get a lot of Spanish speaking people and here we do have a big rental and influence now and a lot of them do work at restaurants you want to be able to communicate with your staff effectively. Another important subject is business and like business studies. If you are interested in opening your own business, you want to fully understand like what goes on behind the scenes, 
Um, you want to know about accounts and all of that stuff. Even if you have someone that does that for you, you still want to be able to understand exactly what the numbers mean and make sure you balance all of your books. So business is very important to have if that is something you wish to pursue. If you would like to pursue a career in culinary in Trinidad, there are a couple options. Um, you can go, if you're interested in baking, there's a baking academy in Port of Spain that you can look into. Um, at John D in Port of Spain, there's also a culinary program, so you can also look into that. But apart from schooling, you can also, if it's something you're very passionate about, just try to find a mentor in the industry and even stage. A stage is something that we do a lot in the industry. It's basically where you go and you work for free. So it's kind of like an unpaid internship. You go and you work for free a couple days a week. You can even do this while you're in school. And maybe on the weekends, you can go to a restaurant, just ask them if they need extra help and learn as much as you can. Take in as much as you can, practice your knife skills, watch videos on YouTube. Like, it sounds crazy, but it actually does work. There's a lot of knife skill videos. You want to get the fundamentals down because cooking is, anyone can learn to cook. It's like creating the recipes and stuff that takes some more skill. And before you get to that point, you need to learn the fundamentals of cooking. Like the basics, like what is the principles of like stock making, how to cut things properly, and all that stuff before you can build on that. So if you do research online, you go to restaurants to work in your spare time, all that will help to build a resume for yourself so that when you are eventually looking to get a job in the industry, it will be easier for you and people will see that you've been at this for a while and be more willing to hire you. My life of my career so far, I would definitely have to say, has been opening up my own restaurant. Um, although it was challenging, it has definitely taught me so many new skills that I didn't even think I knew or needed to have for the future and it's just given me so much insights about the food industry itself and people and working people and just social media and everything in general. The careers in the food industry, if you don't want to have your own business, you can work at a restaurant, you can become a line cook. A line cook is someone that works on a station, so different stations in a kitchen there's like a grill cook, a garmanji, which does like cool stuff, like salad, stuff like that. Um, there's a pastry cook, and there's saute, there's a fryer cook. So any of those positions you can be there. Um, it's great if you want to travel. It's also recommended. I highly recommend traveling. It's just so interesting and it makes your skill level and your cooking ability diverse because you are all now open to all these new things and ingredients and flavor profiles and it's just amazing. Another great thing about being in the food industry, especially if you have your own business, is that you can dictate your schedule. Since you are running the business and in charge, even if it's a restaurant, yeah, you have to work when you're open and you have to kind of be there to oversee the staff. If you are the head of the restaurant, you can, you can have a sous chef. You can have your sous chef work on season days so you don't have to have such a full schedule. You can also do part-time stuff. You can be a, if you have your own business and you make cakes, you can also do that part-time. You can have another full-time job and you can do that in your spare time so you can transfer your hobby into a second career. Another thing that you can also do is you can learn about different people and cultures like I mentioned before in traveling but you can also do that by being a private chef. I have a lot of friends from being in California that actually work as private chefs. Private chef, it, private chefing actually pays really well. And there are lots of celebrity clients that are always looking for private chef. Being in the food industry, um, any industry in particular actually, during this time with COVID and all the restrictions that we're facing right now, is a little bit more challenging than we used to, but you have to be able to adapt. That's one thing that we've learned throughout this process is adapting and changing what you do. That is how you can be successful during this time. Also, 
people kind of get bored with the same thing so you have to be I think outside of the box see what you can do another thing we started doing were micro weddings which have been pretty popular um, and we have like a package for that so we started off with 10 people weddings and now we are up to 20 person weddings so we have been watching that grow and adapt as the restrictions are being lifted so during this time you kind of have to look, take all of that into consideration and be as creative as you can.